Welcome to the Craft to Career Podcast with Elizabeth Chapel, where every week we dive into how you can turn your craft into a successful career. Get ready to have the career you've always dreamed of. Hello, and welcome to episode 70 of the Craft to Career Podcast. I am Elizabeth Chapel of Quilters Candy, and I am the host of the show. Last week, I did an episode for the podcast on emails, what to send, how often to send, and there were a lot of questions that came from you listeners, which I love. I love that feedback. And so I am making another episode this week where I am going to answer the questions that that you asked. And first of all, I'm going to start off by reading a review. This comes from Apple Podcasts. It's from Chelsea of Elevation Handmade. She says, actionable steps in every episode. Chelsea says, I love to listen each week for new topics and find myself pausing and taking notes with each episode. But what I really love about this podcast is when I'm starting something new in my business, I can go back to past episodes and listen again and take action using steps in the episode. So Chelsea, this makes me so happy. Chelsea's actually an alumni from my course. And it's been really fun to see her business grow. And I love that you are able to go and listen to past episodes and have actionable steps. That's something I'm really excited about for this episode. There is an invitation for you of something that I am going to ask you to do that if you do, you will grow your email list. So this is something I, I'm really excited and I would love to hear from you listeners that when you do this invitation that we talk about at the end of the episode, I would love to just hear how, how did that work for you? How did your list grow? Because I know that it will. So things that we are going to cover in this episode today, how to grow your email list. Should you be giving things away for free? This was a question that people asked repeatedly, you know, how much should you give away for free? Should you be doing that? Are you shooting yourself in the foot? So we're going to talk about that. The website pop-up, yes or no? You know, when you go to a website and it pops up, hey, join the email list. We're going to talk about that. How do you grow your list faster? Don't we all want to know that? So you are going to find out today how to do that. And then I'm going to share what's worked best for me in the past with growing my email list. So I'm just going to, you know, move the curtain and tell you what's worked best for me. So let's start. Let's jump in. All right. So email list, if you did not listen last week, do. Go back and listen because I'm going to help convince you in that episode the importance of an email list. It is the bread and butter, the heartbeat of your business, and it is really the main thing that you should be focusing on with your business. So then the question is, well, how do you grow it? You know, last week I, I talked about what to email because I had a lot of people asking, well, now that I'm growing this list, what do I send people and how often? But then when I did that, people said, well, how, wait, how do I grow a list? So there's two ways, really. The first way is free, natural, organic growth. And the second way is paid growth, where you are paying to grow. So let me dive into what that's going to look like. The free organic growth. Let's be honest. That sounds really good. Who who doesn't want something free? I would way rather have it free. Ways to grow your email list for free includes blogs. Anything with a search engine where someone's going to go and type a Google search or a Pinterest search or any search engine where someone's going to go and look for something, if your content can come up, then that is a way for you to grow your email list because they will search and they will find you. There is social media. That is a free platform where you can go and produce content and naturally grow your audience. Now, you can do these both on your own platforms or on someone else's platforms. So you could be on someone else's blog, be on someone else's search engine result, be on someone else's social media that is also free. So just to be found, 
We're gonna talk about the pros and cons of both of these, but that's the free growth to be searchable, to be found on these free platforms. Now we're gonna talk about paid growth. Paid is probably gonna show up in the same places, but you are going to pay to make sure that you come up at the top, that, people, that you're being put in front of people's eyes. You're not just gonna leave it to chance that someone's going to find you. You are going to pay money to make sure that people see you and your offer. Or you can pay to have to go to an individual rather than paying Facebook or Instagram or, or YouTube or whoever. You could pay an individual and say, hey, I will pay you X amount of money if you will share about me on this platform. So that, that's paid growth. So let's talk about the pros and cons of both. First, let's talk about the free growth. The pro, we've already talked about that. It's free. It's totally free. Another pro is you can target your audience. Now, this is the same for both. That's a pro for both of them. But you can target your audience. You can make sure that you are being found on a blog about quilting. You can make sure that you're being on a social media about quilting or, you know, make sure that you have the right audience. The cons. It is the slow burn. It takes time. It takes consistency. Uh, it, it just takes the time. So that's the con there. With paid, the pros are that it is faster. It's going to go faster. Granted, if you're doing it right, you can definitely pay for ads and not know what you're doing and have that just be a waste of money. So that's a con. A con is also that it's expensive. So a con, a double con, could be that you're paying and it's not being effective. But if you do the ads right, you will grow your audience faster. The pros as well, you can target your audience. And you can target your audience in ways that, that are, could be seen as creepy. Um, once you get into the Facebook ads and you can see all the things that you can target, um, you know how <laughs> it's always watching you, Google, all that. It really is, and it's gathering information. But when it comes to marketing, it's awesome because you can target these people who want and are looking for exactly what you are offering. So pro, pro or con, however you want to look at that. So that's the ways to get growth for your email list. But I really, you know, want to dive into some more nitty gritties, some tangibles, because that can seem very vague and very like, what? What do I do now? And I mean, just, just to, to keep in mind, your business, it's, it's a numbers game. So you're throwing out a net and you are telling as many people as possible about your business and what you offer, what you have. And then just like a fishing net, some of those fish are going to leave the net. And the ones that love what you do and what you offer, they're going to stay. So it really is a game of getting in front of more eyes, getting seen by more people. You want to be known by as many people as possible. You want to be familiar. And our, you know, we're always, well, what's the quickest way to do that? How can I do that quicker and more efficiently? And so I'm going to share for me what, what's been the best growth for me. And that has been hands down, well, the two. So I've done the free and the paid growth. For the free growth, it has been being on a blog. And not just any blog, a blogger who has a very dedicated audience, a very loyal, big audience, and and I was very intentional about not just doing any kind of guest blog post. I, that was free content. I had a quilt pattern that I didn't feel comfortable selling because I made my own version. It's the free gingham quilt pattern. And I made my layout a little bit different, but there are other free patterns out there that are similar with their own twist. So that to me was a good opportunity to have a free pattern because it there's because that's what I wanted to do. Now I could I could charge for it, and I am not here to tell you when you should charge and when you shouldn't because that's a very personal decision, and so many factors go into that. But for me, I decided to offer the free gingham quilt pattern, and I decided for this guest blog post that I would have that be an opt-in that I would share the fabrics that I use, the techniques. But if you wanted the pattern, you would have to opt in to my email list. 
I'm going to give a little word of advice here. If you do a guest blog post or, yeah, we'll just say guest blog post and you have a free opt-in, offer that opt-in multiple times throughout the blog post. Do not wait till the end of the blog post where the opt-in is at the end. You want to put it right front and center like at the very intro, hey, for example, hey, I'm Elizabeth from Quilters Candy. I've got this great free quilt pattern. Get it here and put a big button right front and center that people see immediately when they go to that guest blog post. Uh, I have people on my blog who are guests, and sometimes if they don't do that, I'll go in and just add a button and create an extra one because I'm like, oh, you want that to be the very first thing people see, and you want to sprinkle it throughout. Put it, you know every couple paragraphs, overdo it. Just put that opt-in in in as many places as possible and remind them over and over again, here's where you get that free opt-in, here, here, here. So that has been my biggest growth. And in fact, a couple weeks ago, I started getting hundreds of people again opting in for that. I was like, what is going on? And she had shared about it again. I'm like, oh, sweet. Thank you for sharing about that. I don't know if it was on another blog post or in an email, but um, at plus this person has Pinterest and posted it on Pinterest and it went viral on Pinterest. So I can't promise that every time that you're a guest on someone's blog, it will have similar results, but I can say for me, it worked really well. And another reason it worked really well, there is one particular photo of that quilt that people just loved. And I tried a few different photos And that one photo, every time, people just went bananas. So with that in mind, last year I decided to try Facebook ads because I I know that at a certain point there is some growth that cannot come unless it's through paid ads. And so I was ready to try it. And I ran ads, paid ads, to that same opt-in. I used that same photo that went really popular, you know, viral. And I knew that it was already resonating with people. People were already excited about it. So that's what I put my money behind. And that worked really well for me. I have also then tried just, oh, let's try this. Let's try this. And it didn't go as well. So I will say if you decide to do some paid ads, I would only put money behind something that you've tried on a free platform and that you know is doing well. Whether that's people are opting in or people tend to buy it or they comment, they like, whatever. If as long as it's doing well on its own, that's when it's a good idea to pay money to get that in front of more eyes. Otherwise, you're it's a gamble and odds are it's not going to work the way that you're hoping that it will. So it's better to try it out on a free platform first. And if it's really sticking and people are excited about it, then put, you know, put some more flame on the fire. Is that the right term I'm using? (laughs) Feed the fire, we'll say. So those are my, that's my biggest success. One other thing that has been really successful that as of this recording is, is recent and new is I have created a quilt pattern template and I tried running ads to that, but it was a paid, a paid thing that people had to buy. And so then I created a free mini course that people, it's only a limited time, but I show people how to use Canva, canva canva.com to create a quilt pattern and that's free. And they only have access to that course for for a, a short amount of time. But within that, then I offer the templates and I sell those. So people are much more likely to opt into that free course, especially if I'm running ads and they don't know who I am. It's, it's a much harder sale to, to sell a, a, high, a higher ticket, medium, whatever ticket item if they don't know you. But if you can offer something for free and invite people in and get them to know and like you and then offer them an upsell, that will work better for you. And so this free course has been really great for me. It's been, people are very excited about it. It's gone really well. It's been received really well. And as far as what I'm excited about, I'm finding people who are my ideal customer 
they are interested in writing their own quilt patterns. And my big signature course, my quilt pattern writing course is coming up next month. And so I'm finding these warm people who are already, I know they're already interested in writing and selling quilt patterns because they're signing up for my free course to learn how to do that. Then in my free course, they're watching my videos, they're getting to know me, they're deciding if I'm their person, you know, if they like me, if they like the way that I teach, if I bring value to them. And I also only offer this for a limited time. So it gives them that sense of urgency, for, first of all, to encourage them to use the content. A lot of times people will opt in to get something free and never use it. But I want to make sure that people are actually logging in and doing the course content. I want them to have success. I want them to feel that urgency that, oh, I better do this or it'll be gone. And it's worked. People are, are logging in and doing the course faster. I, I could see before, before I, it was, you had it forever, people weren't logging in. So after chatting with a friend, Tia, Tia Curtis, she is, um, she's a friend who I chatted with and got this idea from her. Thank you, Tia. Uh, that if you have that for a limited time, she signed up for a course where it was limited time. And it is it is that sense of like, oh, I need to do this. I got to do it now. And it worked. All of a sudden, I could see people were logging in and finishing the content in the course. I was like, oh, yay. So there's another little thing to think about. But um, so that brings us to this idea of freebies. People are asking, and, and rightfully so, should I be offering freebies? How much is too much? Am I, when do I shoot myself in the foot? And, you know, pros and cons of freebies. One, you're going to get more people to come and find you. But then you're also finding people who just maybe want free stuff and aren't wanting to buy. You know, and then when you're ready to sell, are people, is there too much free content out there that people are like, well, I'll just find free stuff. So freebies. Let's talk about this. As you can hear from what I've shared, I have offered freebies in the past. It has worked very, very well for me, but it has to be thoughtful and intentional. Oftentimes, I have heard my students say, I need more people on my list, so I'm going to create a free pattern. And their solution just seems to be put out free content and voila, my list will grow and I'll have more customers. It just isn't that simple. So free content, the reason we offer it is so that people can get to know, like, and trust you. You are giving out just a teaser, just an appetizer. You want people to, like I said, to get to know you. You want that free content to be of value so that people can say, actually, yeah, she has good quality stuff and I need more of it. And you also want it to lead people down a path where they will naturally buy from you. For example, with the templates, there's this mini course that I offer and it offers value. I mean, you can, you can go to that and you can create a quilt pattern using what I teach you. However, I solve the next solution. Do you wanna save a little more time you can, you can see now how to do this, how to go into Canva and create a quilt pattern. But guess what? I have some templates that I've made for you that you can just drag and drop your own stuff. So you can save some time. It's not very expensive. Here you are. So that solves their next problem. Then if someone goes along and they're doing this and they're like, ooh, I'm not sure about the wording. I'm not sure this is making sense. Is my design unique enough? Am I marketing this right? How could I get more sales? How do I up-level my, my skills as a quilt pattern writer? Perfect. Come and join my big signature course where we dive into all the things quilt pattern writing. And so as you can see, I'm leading them down a path where, yes, I'm offering value, but to get to the next phase on that path, I have a product that they can buy that solves that problem for them. It makes it easier for them. It helps them in a way that couldn't without that thing. So that's the idea of a freebie. You want to offer just something that is a natural, like a door opener, if you will, to what your ideal customer wants. And when you sell something to them, you want to sell the next thing on their progress, on their path to progress. So for example, I heard this story of um, 
Russell Brunson, who, you know, I'm a big fan. I read his books, all that. He liked to bowl and like he was a bowler. And so he bought, a, he watched an infomercial about a bowling ball and a glove. And this glove will help you be the best bowler you can be. So he went and he bought the glove and the ball. And then a pop-up came and said, look, another glove. And he was like, well, that's dumb. Why would I, I just bought a glove. I'm not going to buy another glove. Let's give this one a try and see how it works. And so you don't want to just like, in quilting terms, here's a free pattern. Oh, and here's another free pattern and another. No, they've got the free pattern, so they're good. So the next ideal thing would be now, do you, you've got this free pattern. What fabrics are you going to use? Come and check out my fabric bundles. Or do you, now that you have this free pattern, you'll see there's a template. Come and buy the templates or whatever it might be. So if you're offering a freebie, you want it to just be the very first baby step so that you can then sell the next thing. So think whatever it is that you're selling, what is someone going to need to buy that thing? Is it a shopping list? Is it a supply list? Is it whatever it might be, offer that first thing for free and then say, okay, now that you've got this, come and buy these supplies or come and buy this whatever, and I'll help you on that next path. And so that's, that's the idea behind a freebie. So it's, it's very thoughtful and intentional, and it's putting it out for a specific purpose. It's going to serve your audience. It's going to bring them value. And as they're walking along the path using this freebie that you've given them, you're going to then solve their next issue with a product. And uh, you know, with this idea of a freebie, uh, again, it's, it, I love having the students, the alumni that I have in my courses because I get to hear their questions. And so I feel like I have my ear to the ground of, of the things that the thoughts that entrepreneurs have. And so one that I've heard repeatedly is, all right, I've got this freebie. I am going to go and share it now with my audience. Yes, that's, that's wonderful. However, those people are already in your audience. The purpose of a freebie is to bring in new, to throw the nets out and to find more people. And so it doesn't do a lot of good to offer your existing audience more freebies. What you want to do is get it to a new audience. So to either borrow someone else's audience or to pay to get it in front of new eyes. Let's say you have a following on Instagram. Just because someone's following you on Instagram does not necessarily mean that they're on your email list. And as you know, the ultimate goal is to get them on your email list. So I'm not saying it's a total waste of your time to put out a freebie on Instagram and say, hey, grab the freebie and the link in my bio, because you might, you know, just from your own audience, you might grow that email list. But it is really ideal to, to get it in front of other audiences. That's how you're going to grow, and that's how you're going to grow faster. So I have now an idea for you, something to try out. If you go and do this, please let me know how it goes, because I know that it will help you grow your email list. So something for you to try. I want you to reach out to someone who has an audience of a similar interest as your audience. So again, let's talk about quilting. Let's say you are a, quilt a modern quilt pattern designer. I want you to reach out to someone else who is a modern quilt pattern designer or who has people in their audience who are interested in modern quilt pattern designs. And I want you to ask them if you can do a swap. So what I'm talking about here is you would reach out to someone and say, hey, I have a blog, you have a blog, our audience has similar interests. Could I write a guest blog post for you and you write a guest blog post for me and we'll tell our audience about the guest blog post. Now the wording, let's, you know, you don't need to do exactly, type out exactly as I'm saying here, but that's the idea. Or you could just say, hey, I love your content on Instagram. You have the cutest fabrics my audience would love to see more of you. Would you be interested in creating a post that I could post on my feed 
and tag you and tell people about you to go follow you. And I would love to do the same for you. Voila, you both make a post or a reel, even better, a reel, where you somehow you're serving their audience, but you're also introducing who you are. And ideally, you're sharing a freebie because the goal here is to grow your email list. So things to think about with this, because I know, I know that people are going to be like, well, wait, it matters. It matters how you reach out to someone and it matters the wording. So when you reach out to someone, first of all, you want to compliment them first. Start off by a compliment. I'm going to think of a real life example and I'm going to use my friend Maude of the Retro Quilter. She has no idea I'm doing this, but I thought of her and she's a good friend and I feel like she'll be okay with that. So let's say this, that I am taking my own challenge and I'm going to do that. What I would do is I would probably send her a DM, a direct message on Instagram. I would say, hey, Maude, it's Elizabeth here. I have a really fun idea. I'm really digging the quilt that you just released, your Retro Daisies quilt. It was so cool, and I really think that my audience would love it and love to see more of it and, and get to know you a bit more. I also have a free quilt pattern that I think your audience would really love. Would you be interested if I created a reel for you that talked about my free pattern, and if you created a reel for me that shared about your Retro Daisy quilt, and I would post the reel of you on my feed, and you could post my reel about the free gingham quilt on your feed. And then we can put a link in our bio where people can go and get your pattern and they could get my free quilt pattern. So I would think it out really specifically. First of all, do your audiences really mesh well together? Second of all, are you reaching out to the right person? You don't wanna reach out to someone who might view it as competition or not be comfortable with offering your freebie. So, you know, be thoughtful about who you reach out to. And then also think about is, is what you offer something that really is a benefit? Like if you have this free gingham quilt pattern, is their audience genuinely going to want that? And if so, great, reach out to that person and see if you can do a swap. Like I said, either a blog post swap or you both offer a freebie. The point is you want to borrow each other's audiences and you want her audience to see your thing and your audience to see her thing. It's a win-win deal for both of you and you will both grow, you just will. A next level thing to do would be to include this opt-in on the email lists of each other. So if you, like if I were reaching out to Maude, I would say, hey, I'll be sure to include that in my email that's going out this week would you also be willing to send an email out about my free pattern as well? So that is the invitation, to reach out to someone to do a collaboration. And if it feels terrifying, good. That means that you're pushing yourself, you're stretching yourself. The magic sauce, you know, the magic happens when we are collaborating. We cannot grow in a bubble. Like, you, we need one another. And it, it, beautiful things happen when collaborations happen. You will see that. It, it just really does. So um, try it. Try and reach out to someone. And, you know, if you're like, well, no one's going to want to work with me. I only have 200 people. That is not necessarily true. If you have something that's really great, that is of value to someone's audience, they will love to have it. Think of it. You're saving somebody time. You're giving them content. And so that's a value. It's not always just about the audience size. It's really about saving somebody their resources, their time, their work, money. So you are of value to someone just by having something that's great. So, so just give it a try. And if it doesn't go well, that's okay. You can try with someone else. If it doesn't go well also, Take a look at your wording and how you're reaching out to someone. Because like I said, it really does matter the way that you reach out to someone. And then I had mentioned at the beginning, and I want to talk about the website pop-up. We've all seen them, and most likely we all kind of hate them. They're annoying. Let's just call it what it is. It pops up when you go to a website, and it's usually annoying because we didn't want to see it. And sometimes we can't figure out how to close it but they are effective if done well. 
So the pop-up. Things that work well are saying save 20%. Giving someone a reason to opt in. This is free of any, any opt-in, any freebie, any email list growth. It is not as effective to say something like, hey, stay in touch, be the first to know, join the list. That's just not enticing enough for people. Uh, think of it. I mean, unless they're your our literal best friend and you really want to stay in touch, that is just not going to do it. You know, people need to have a reason. They want something in exchange for that email address. And so that is why freebies are appealing and they work. So things that work for a pop-up are a discount code, a really great, you know, get my free pattern, like the free Kingdom quilt pattern, something of value that is a tangible takeaway right away. Otherwise, I would not worry about the pop-up. So really, it's just about the value. And people ask, is that going to be annoying? It, yes, it probably will. Uh, but you will also get more email addresses that way. And people who are going to say, oh, this is so annoying. I'm just going to leave. I hate these pop-ups. You probably don't want them as your customer anyhow. If they're going to be, you know, that finicky or that annoyed with your content, then it's a good filtering system. Better, better up front than later, you know. So don't worry about that. That's another thing, too. Just don't worry so much about being annoying, if anything, we all need to be a little bit more so in our own minds, not like really annoying, but what we feel like is annoying is actually just marketing and business. A lot of times people are worried about, oh, I don't want to send that email. It's going to be annoying. No, no, no. You, you have to send the emails. You have to show up. You have to tell people that you're selling something and you have to gather those email addresses it's, it is just business. And let's look at those businesses that we really love. I love Spanx. I've talked about it before. I love Sarah Blakely, the owner, as if I know her. I feel like she's my best friend. She doesn't know me, but, but we're good friends. But she's just so fun. And do I get annoyed when she shows up on my Instagram? Absolutely not. I'm like, ooh, ooh cool. What's she up to? Oh, they're having this race. How fun. If she sends an email... I love it because I'm like, oh, what's Sarah up to? You know, I feel like I know her and I want to hear from her. She's not annoying me. And Spanx, when they send out, oh, here's our new pair of jeans. Here's our best sellers. I actually am intrigued. I'm like, what are their best sellers? I should probably take a look because I bet I'm going to love it. I love all their stuff. If it's a best seller, then it's for sure going to be something that I love. I don't get annoyed. And so your job is to find those people who love what you offer and they aren't going to get annoyed because they love you and they love your stuff. And we just need to get past that feeling of we need everyone to love us because that's just not realistic. But there are people who do. And those are the people who you want on your list. You want to stay in touch with them. You want to build that relationship. And again, go back and listen to last week's episode where we talk a lot more about nurturing that relationship through your email list. But, um, but don't be afraid to be, quote, unquote, annoying because what you feel like might be annoying is actually just good business. So sending out emails weekly, not annoying if you're doing it right, which again, listen to last week. If you are offering an opt-in or a freebie that is serving somebody, not annoying. A pop-up comes and it offers a discount to this thing that they really want to buy, not annoying. That's wonderful. They want it. So you might be annoying to some people, but they are not your customers. You are being very helpful and generous to the people who want what you offer. And same with, I've heard people like, oh, well, that's just a sales tactic to use scarcity. Again, it's not. It's, it's helping your customer. So things that some people might say are annoying or sleazy business or you know, anything like that, it's actually beneficial to your customer. You are helping someone make a decision. Do they want this thing from you? 
they've got to decide and you are helping, you're saving you and them time and you're helping them figure out if you're a good fit for each other. So in summary, let's go over the things that we have talked about today. Should you be giving things away for free? I think you know the answer now. The answer is yes, but it needs to be very thoughtful and it should be few, far between. Don't just throw out a freebie every time you want to grow your list. If anything, take what you already have for free and borrow someone else's audience and put it in front of a new audience, a bigger audience, a different audience. Website pop-ups, yes or no? Yes, but word it well and offer something of value. How to grow a list faster. There's paid growth, there's free growth. We talked about some ideas for both. And specifically, you have a homework assignment to go and do to collaborate with someone. And then we talked about what's worked best for me for my email growth. And that's been the free gingham quilt pattern, being a guest on someone's blog and running ads to that. And then most recently, offering my free mini course, which is a doorway, a gateway, if you will, to other products that people can buy, where it's setting them on this path to where they are wanting to learn to write and sell quilt patterns. And they get this first thing for free. And then, hey, let me help you with the next step and the next step. And so that those are the things that have worked the best for me. So I hope today that you have some takeaway tangible items, just like Chelsea of Elevation Handmade wrote in her review. She loves that about this podcast because there are things that you can take notes on and that you can actually implement to try and to grow your business. So I would love to hear from you listeners about your success with the collaboration. And I also love your questions and your feedback because that's how I create this content for you. So I've done two weeks now with email, email growth and email nurturing. And next week, I'm going to come in and talk about the business of quilt pattern writing. We're getting closer to the launch of my signature course that opens once a year. And so I want to do some deep dives into how to be a quilt pattern designer, why, how to earn money doing it, which I already have an episode out there of 16 ways to earn money as a quilt pattern designer. But I'm going to dive deep into my students what's worked well for them, just kind of broad overview of being a quilt pattern designer, the myths, the realities, what that looks like, having success with it, and getting ready for that big signature course. So I am excited to see you here next week on the Craft to Career podcast. If you have found this valuable and helpful, go ahead and take a photo and share it on social media. Let your friends know that there are resources out there for having a successful business, that there are tangible takeaways, that they can grow that email list, that they can have success. It's doable and it's fun. And if you haven't already, be sure to write a review. You can either just give the star review or you can write a review and let me know what you find helpful, what you're enjoying about the podcast. And until next Friday, have a wonderful week, and we'll see you right back here on the Craft to Career podcast. Mm-hmm.